Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my fourth alternative using the April 2020 paper pumpkin kit. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers. I'm so glad that you stopped by again today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. Over the past few days, I have been sharing with you some alternatives using the latest paper pumpkin kit. They are the three cards you see in front of me here. And if you're interested in seeing how I made any of these, the playlist is linked in the description box below. Let me start off today by saying I do not know what this card is going to turn out like. All I know is that I want to make a shaker card. So I got out some products that I think I'll be using, but I might be adding stuff later on. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. So if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. So the supplies that I'll be using from the kit, I will be using some of the stamps. I'm just not sure yet. I got out the Pear Pizzazz Stampin' Spot that came with the kit. I got out the Z Fold card that came with the kit. And then I have a couple of scraps. I have the outer places for the birds, and then I cut apart an envelope and I have the rest of what was left of the flap. I also got out three of the butterflies from the punch out and one of the little birds, along with the pretty little pearls that we got. Some of the items that don't come from the kit are my sequins for my shaker. I got out some little green, little yellow, and some silver. To make my shaker window, I got out my Hero Arts Infinity dies, and I got out a scrap of acetate. Now here in the background is a piece of cardstock from my own stash that I thought kind of matched the darkest green in this right here. Let's get crafty. Today's process is going to start with cutting. The first thing I do is cut the card front off of this card and then I'm going to trim it down so the final size is 5 inches wide by 3 and 3 quarters inches tall. I did make just one cut for the 3 and 3 quarters but when I was cutting the 5 inches I took a little bit off both ends of the card piece. Next, I cut my mat for the piece that I just trimmed down. This is going to be 5 and 1 8 inches wide by 3 and 7 8 inches tall. It's just a nice white 16th of an inch border all the way around. The next thing I'm going to do is cut a frame that will go on the front of the decorative piece that will eventually be the frame around my shaker window. Now because I do not need the center of this green piece of cardstock, I'm going to cut the frame right out of the middle of there. I'm going to center this one, the larger die I chose, onto the middle of that and run it through my die cutter. Once that has been ran through the die cutter, I'm going to use that center piece that I cut out and adhere that centered on the decorative piece. Once that's down, I'm going to place my smaller die on the front of this centered in the dark green area and run it back through my die cutter. Now because this is pretty thick now, I do run it through backward and forward just to make sure it cuts through both layers. And now I have a nice even frame around the shaker window opening. The next step is to place this onto the dark green mat, which is the cardstock that I cut the first rectangle from. For these next couple cuts, I pulled out my Fiskars photo trimmer since it's smaller and easier to handle. The first thing I cut down was my scrap of acetate and I just roughly guessed on the cuts making it just slightly larger than the shaker window opening. Next I'm going to cut down this scrap. I want to use the butterfly portion so I'm going to trim that off from the rest leaving just a little extra on the top. I got my ATG back out to glue down my acetate to the back of this piece. I just put some adhesive around all four edges, then place my acetate in there centered, and I press down pretty well on this. 
Next, I spent some time trying to get that butterfly piece adhered centered in the back of this frame. It took a little finessing and it took more time than I thought it would, but finally I had it where I liked it in the opening. Now there is a small gap at the bottom, but I planned on covering that up later with that yellow border strip. And now it's time for my big blue roll of foam tape to make its entrance today. I love this stuff. I buy it on Amazon. You get a lot of it and it is very economical. If you're interested in knowing more about it, I do have a link in the description box below. I used it to make a frame around my butterflies just to get started on the shaker window. But unfortunately, I spent a lot more time making this shaker and it didn't work like I wanted it to. It might be hard to see on video now, but the sequins were actually coming up between the butterfly piece and the acetate window. I was pretty frustrated at this point. I tried an X-Acto knife, I tried tearing it apart, but nothing would work. But luckily, I was able to salvage that front frame and I decided to go with a different plan. And the only reason that I'm leaving this part in and letting you see my mistake is I saw somebody recently who said that they didn't make videos because they weren't as smooth or as good at it as those YouTubers. And I just wanted you to know that the power of video editing makes everyone look like a pro card maker. I hope you'll go ahead and give it a try because everybody makes mistakes, but it's what you do with those mistakes that counts. And now it is time for plan B. I decided that I would use the butterfly piece as kind of a template on the front of the shaker window this time, and I got out eight of the butterflies from the kit. My plan now is to place four butterflies across the top row, four butterflies across the bottom row, and then I will put my sentiment in the opening between the two. I got out the glue dots from the kit, and I placed four on the back of each butterfly. Once I pulled the release paper from the glue dots, I then placed that butterfly in one of the openings from that scrap. I did the same thing for the rest of the butterfly until I had all eight of these placed. Now, before I move on, I'll let you watch me do some of these and I'm gonna let you know what today's secret word is. Keeping in theme with kind of the disaster this video was at the beginning, today's secret word is oops. Now, I will be back later this week or early next to tell you what you're gonna do with these words. The only thing I ask right now is that you do not leave any kind of comment that highlights or enforces what the secret word might be. And if you haven't already heard from my videos over the last few days, you will collect these words so you can be entered to win one of four $25 gift cards in honor of my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. Once I had all of the butterflies adhered down, I then removed the template and that gave me two nice rows of four butterflies. And now I'm gonna pull back in my big blue roll of foam tape and we're gonna start this shaker window for the second and final time. I do the same thing where I make a frame around the edge of that window with the blue tape and then, because I don't want my sequins falling behind the butterflies, I want them to stay out in the open area, I'm gonna use the dimensionals that came with the kit and place those on the back of the butterflies. I put one full mini dimensional on the bottom two parts of the butterfly, and then I cut one in half and put those on the top on the taller wings. I then repeat this process for all eight butterflies. To make sure my sequins don't fall all the way to the bottom of my shaker window, I am gonna place the yellow strip here where I think it will be on the final card. And then I'm gonna get back out my blue foam tape and I'm gonna add another barrier on this. That way the sequins that I put in the top section will stay there and it's gonna make the shaker look more full. And no shaker window is complete without the sequins. I was able to salvage most of the sequins from my first attempt at this card, so here I am just distributing them in the top and bottom section of the butterflies. Once I have those where I like them, I'm gonna pull the release tape, and then I got out a scrap of white cardstock to put on the back of this piece. Once that was placed on the adhesive, I got out my scissors and just rough cut the extra off of here. Because I want that die cut piece to fill more of the card from left to right, 
I cut it in half and then I'm going to put a fishtail end in each side. When I apply the adhesive to this, I'm going to place it on the card and I'm going to make sure that the left side goes over that frame and goes into the white area of the card front. I'll do the same thing for the other side except this one extends into that light green area. Next, I stamp the sentiment onto the green die cut that came with the kit and I'm using the Pear Pizzazz ink from the kit. This just gets it here just flat down onto the card front and this will cover up the opening in that yellow strip. Now that the shaker was all ready, thank goodness it worked this time, I just put that on the front center of a card base and here are some looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this card today. And now you know that not everything looks as perfect as it does on the final video, but I wanted to make this shaker card work, and I hope that you'll do the same if you ever run into an issue with a card. If you did enjoy the video, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.